In this video, I'll go over setting up PyAlert on a Synology NAS using Container Manager. PyAlert is a network security scanner and notification framework that is packaged behind an easy-to-use web interface that allows you to visually keep an eye on your network, as well as receive alerts if changes occur. PyAlert is customizable and has quite a few options, so I'd recommend that you check out the documentation that PyAlert provides which I'll include in the description below. The goal of this video is to get you up and running with PyAlert using the default ARP scanner, which will detect active hosts on your local network, do some initial setup that I found useful in my environment, and set up email notifications through Gmail so you can get alerted if any changes occur on your network. Let's get started, and the first thing to do is make sure that Container Manager is installed. If it isn't, you'll want to install it from the Package Center. Once Container Manager is installed, you'll want to bring up FileStation and create a few folders that PyAlert will use for persistent data under the Docker Shared folder. Here I'll create a PyAlert folder, then I'll create a config and db subfolder within the PyAlert folder. Next, you'll want to enable SSH because we'll need to SSH into the NAS to figure out what network interface is being used, which we'll need when configuring PyAlert. Once all of these prerequisite steps have been completed, we can start configuring the PyAlert container. At this point, I'll start up Container Manager, select Project, then click Create to begin creating a new project. Here, I'll enter in a project name, Set the path to the PyAlert folder that was just created. Select Create Docker Compose.yaml for source and paste in this pre configured YAML config that I'll use for this project. You'll find a copy in the description below as well. Before moving on, I just wanted to point out a few important settings. First, the network mode is set to host because we want to have the container use the same networking space as the host Synology NAS. The volumes point to the subfolders that were created earlier under the PyAlert folder, but in this setup I'm using the relative path to those folders. And finally, the port number that will be used to access the PyAlert container will be 20211. Now I'll click Next. Next once again on this Web Portal Settings window, then click Done on this Summary window to start the process of downloading the PyAlert image and creating the container. Once the container is successfully built, I'll bring up a new browser tab and enter in the IP address of my Synology NAS along with port 20211 to bring up the PyAlert web interface. PyAlert needs to complete importing plugins before continuing with the setup, so I'll let this finish up. And while waiting, if you like this video so far, consider giving it a thumbs up as well as subscribe to this channel and enable notifications if you like this type of content. I'm back after about 10 minutes of letting the plugin finish importing, and at this point, PyAlert has a process wait status. I'll refresh the page, and we can see that PyAlert has detected a couple of devices, which are my internet router and the Synology NAS that runs PyAlert. Now we can start configuring PyAlert further by bringing up settings. Then under Core, I'll enter in the time zone that I'm in and change the PyAlert URL to the internal IP address of my Synology NAS, including the port number used to access PyAlert. I'll scroll further down to the Device Scanner section, and like I mentioned earlier, we'll be using the default ARP scan to detect devices on the network. Here we can see that, by default, the ARP scan is set to use the 192.168 .1.0/24 subnet, and if you are using that network, you might have seen additional devices earlier when the plugins finished loading. In my case, I'm using a different subnet, so I'll click Remove All to clear the subnet that is entered, and enter in the subnet that my network is using. For the Ethernet device to use, I'd like to confirm exactly what it should be. So I'll bring up a terminal session and SSH into my Synology NAS to figure that out. Once I'm logged in, I'll run the command IP address, and I can see that eth0 is assigned the IP address 
of my Synology NAS, so that is the device I should use. Now I'll switch back over to the PyAlert browser window and enter in ETH0 for the Ethernet device and click Add to finish configuring the ARPSCAN setup. Next, I'll scroll down to the Publisher section and expand Email Publisher SMTP. I'll change the When to Run option from Disabled to On Notification to enable email notifications. Then I'll enter in the information needed to use Gmail as the SMTP server, along with where to send the notification emails to and the email subject. If you plan to use Gmail as well, just note that I created an app password for the setup that I'm using, and I'll leave a link to Gmail's help article on setting up an app password in the description below. At this point, I've made all the changes that I wanted to make, so I'll click Save to finalize the updates. This again starts up the importing of plugins, so I'll let PyAlert do its thing and come back when it's done. Before continuing with the PyAlert configuration, I just wanted to mention that I got an email confirming that new devices were found, so I know that the email notification setup is working fine in my setup. If, however, you didn't get an email notification, what you could do back in PyAlert is first refresh the settings page, then bring up the email publisher SMTP section once again, and click on this link here to send a test email out. Once the execution queue clears, you should get a test email notification in your inbox, and if not, you'll want to check out the error log to see what the problem is. At this point, if all went well, PyAlert should be all set up, and the next thing to do is configure your individual devices by bringing up the Devices section. I'll show you how I configured a few of my devices, and I'll start with my Synology router. I'll bring up the Details page for the router by clicking on its name. Then I'll change some of the information for the device, and I'll start by changing the type to Router. Next, I'll change the icon to Network-Wired, which is brought in through Font Awesome, and I'll leave a link to Font Awesome's icon search web page in the description below. I'll change the group to Always On, enable Alert Down to be alerted if the router is down, uncheck the New Device box because I don't want the router to be tagged as a new device, and click Save. Next, I'll click on this unnamed device which I know is my Synology NAS because of the IP address assigned to it. From its details page, I'll give it a name. Set the type to NAS. Change its Font Awesome icon to Server. Update the vendor field. Change the group to Always On. Enable the Alert Down option. Uncheck the New Device box and click Save. The next device I'll edit is my MacBook Pro, so I'll bring up its details page and update the name. I'll set type to Laptop. Group it under Personal. Uncheck the Alert All Events box because I know my MacBook will constantly be on and off the network, so I don't want any alerts for it. And I'll uncheck the New Device box and click Save. Hopefully these few examples helped you get started in configuring your devices, and what I did was finish updating the details for the rest of the devices on my network outside of the video, and here is what my PyAlert looks like after running it for a few days. You can see a few more devices were detected, and I also have a few devices that were offline or down over the last 12 hours. If I click on Presence, I can get more details on how long devices were online, as well as see if PyAlert detected if a device connected and then disconnected. I also like that you can build a network map from the network section by assigning devices to network nodes. I think PyAlert is a great tool, and I plan to customize my setup further as I learn more about it. If you've had some experience with PyAlert, Please share any tips or tricks that you may have in the comments below, and check out some of my other videos listed here on screen. Lastly, if you'd like to support my work or hire me for a project you are working on, 
check out the links either here on screen or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching.